My name is Chef Eve DeShane, and today we're in the Greener Village's Learning Kitchen with uh, Travis Grant, owner of uh, Unplugged, a board games cafe. Welcome, Travis. Thanks for having me. Right on. So, Travis, having you on today, I thought maybe we would make uh, some Elven Adventuring Ration Bars, seeing that <laughs> you guys are a game bar cafe and you guys do quests and campaigns and stuff like that. Yeah. So, uh, we'll get started with that. And uh, while we're doing that, uh, tell me a little bit about Unplugged. What do you, can you expect when you walk through the doors? Sure. So, Unplugged is this idea where you're going to come into the cafe. You, we've got about 700 board games for you to try. Uh, and you are going to pick a game and you're going to have the best time of your life. And uh, some people are like, well, I'm not really into games, so I don't even know what to choose. And that's what we're here for. We're here to make your life easy. You tell us what you're into, and I guarantee you there's a board game that you will enjoy to play. Well, that's fun, too, because, I mean, gaming boards can be expensive. So uh, coming into your cafe, you can just go in and kind of explore before you purchase, right? 100%. Yeah, there's... Um, like I said, there's about six, seven hundred board games that we have, so there is more than enough for you to get your toes wet and try something before maybe making an expensive purchase. Right on. Yeah. Uh, just board games at the Unplugged? Uh, no, actually. We also have escape rooms at the cafe, so um, on the main floor is where all the board game happens, and then we have an upstairs and we have a bunch of escape rooms up there. We have physical escape rooms, which is an escape room for people who don't know, is a room that you're going to lock yourself into lock yourself, not really, but yeah. pretend lock yourself into, and you're solving puzzles and things trying to escape the room. We have one room that um, is all about spies. We have another room that's all about um, trying to disarm a bomb. We also have virtual reality escape rooms as well, where you put on a virtual reality helmet and you roam around in a big empty room, but what you see, you can be in outer space or underwater or fighting dragons. It's really cool. Cool, and uh, how many of those do you have? So the way the virtual reality works is um, you can play with up to five people, and uh, there are currently seven adventures that you can choose from. And then with the physical rooms, we have uh, three, three physical rooms that you can do. Currently, we've got one that we're working on. We're turning into like a creepy witch's cabin. So that should be open, I'm hoping, by the end of April, early May. Okay, cool. And then you also do uh, campaigns with Dungeons and Dragons, don't you? Yeah, we do. We have this really cool thing, which um, once a month we have like a Dungeons and Dragons kind of uh, adventure. And the neat thing with that is same thing. If, if you've never done D&D &D before, no big deal. We have lots of people who are called DMs. So these are the people who create these adventures. And they're like little one-off adventures. So they'll come in. You can come in. Uh, if you've never done it before, no big deal. They walk you through it. We have little characters already made up for you, or you can create your own. And then it's all about having adventures with people that you've never encountered with in, in real life. I was at um, uh, one of these things, and it was like, you know, there was like a little nerdy kid, a super jock, uh, you know, a mom. And it was just these people that would never mix in real life are playing this adventure together, and that is the beauty of role-playing games. All right, well, on that, uh, let's talk about the, the Elven Granola Bar. So basically what it is, is it's just, a, it's a hiking bar. Okay. If you're outdoorsy and uh, you're going on hikes and things like that, it's a trail bar, but if you're a guy who likes to sit in your basement, play Dungeons and Dragons, this is a great way to just kind of keep on going. Hunting orcs does build up a bit of a hunger. It does, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. All right, so we're just gonna start with uh, a cup and a half of oatmeal, if you okay. just wanna Pour that Coming right in into there. there. Any kind of oatmeal, quick oats, uh, whatever you'd like to use. Uh, we're going to use a half cup of nuts, whatever nuts you have handy. We have almonds here today. Almonds. Ah, perfect. But if you're looking budget friendly, you can substitute with like walnuts or your favorite one. Like if you're looking for cashews or yeah. filberts or whatever yep. you want to use. Uh, we're also going to be using some cranberries. We're making, uh, we're in New Brunswick. We've got lots of cranberries. It's a great way to, uh, to use up local resources as well. Nice. And then we're going to put in some shredded coconut. Ah, shredded coconut. There we go. I am doing pretty good. Usually when I'm cooking, it's like there's like this big outline of a mess around the bowl. Well, that's it. And I mean, yeah, I mean, the cameras are on. I think that might just kind of curb it. We're always paying a little bit more attention. So <laughs> if you want to stir that together. This could be where the mess happens. It could be. So while you're doing that, I'm going to add what I call the melty bit, something that's going to kind of bind all of this together. So we're going to add... Uh, a teaspoon of vanilla. We're going to add a quarter cup of maple syrup. Ooh. You can use honey if you'd like, uh, corn syrup. You can use brown sugar. It all depends on the syrup that you have Kay. or the sugar that you want to use. Um, I'm using uh, a couple tablespoons of almond milk. Uh, you can use any kind of thing, cashew milk, uh, cow's milk if you'd like. Okay. But cow's milk, m it may just kind of turn, so you want to make sure that you're using something that has a little bit more shelf-stable than 
And then I'm going to use a half cup of peanut butter. And uh, we're using peanut butter, but you can use any kind of butter. If you have a nut allergy, you can use wow butter and omit the nuts. Right. Um, it completely up to you. And then we're going to use a half a cup of dates that are chopped super, super, super fine. So you pop those in right like that. And all we're going to do is we're going to bring this up to a medium high heat. And we're just going to let that melt for a little bit, and uh, but while that's melting, uh, how did you come up with the idea of uh, Unplugged? So uh, my daughter, who was quite young at the time, she was in Ottawa with my brother-in-law brother and sister, and they took her to a cafe called Monopolate, which I thought was like the coolest name of all time. Yeah. And I had never heard of a board game cafe before, and it turns out they were the very first ones in all of Canada. Okay. And uh, so when she came back, she was telling me about this really cool board game cafe thing that she had been to, and I was like, that is really weird. I, that sounds so much fun. I love playing board games. And uh, as you know, I've been in the food industry for a while and I was looking for something to do on my own and I thought maybe I could marry these two things and so you know we thought of this idea in July and in November we had the spot and we opened up in February. It was really interesting our Facebook page blew up before we opened we had thousands of followers and it just seemed like people were interested in putting down their phones and just having a good time and talking to each other. And I think, as you know, the, the younger generation has a rough time with that. Yeah. But when they come to the cafe, it's really fun to see the phones go down and they're laughing and playing. Like That is a huge, huge thing for me, just to sit and watch people have fun. Probably a great place to get together and do that once a week. Yeah, it's a great place to meet new friends. It's a great place to reconnect. And like you said, it's super easy, you know, if. If you're having food there or whatever, you know, you make the mess at our place, we're the ones cleaning it up. We can put the games away for you. You don't have to deal with any of that. So it's super easy. Come in, have fun, take off. Right on. Uh, do you do special events? Like, would you book for, say, uh a birthday party or anything like that. Yeah, we basically, we do have birthday parties. We have lots of families that come in. Um, they bring their cakes and they set up in the in, at one of the tables and the kids just have a blast. Like they're grabbing games off the shelf, playing games, throwing them back, grabbing more games off the shelf, having a blast. So we do that, we do corporate events. So for, um, you know, when you're at work and it's stressful and stuff like that, and, and I, I get phone calls all the time from executives trying to find something to do to relax and we're a place to go to do that. So you like team building and that kind of thing? You that, got it, that's 100%. fantastic. You can stay at the cafe for as long as you like, play as many games as you want while you're, you're there. There's zero time limit. Um, if you do the escape rooms, it's a $25 charge, but you do get free admission to the board game cafe, so you can make that a full night type thing for you. Okay, cool. Yeah. Right on. So this is starting to bubble. So we're going to just kind of mix everything together, and we're just going to want to press, make sure that these dates kind of melt into the mix because you don't want that chunkiness of the dates right there. So we'll just kind of work that. And then you can start smelling, smelling it. it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, if you wanted to make this higher in uh, protein or anything like that, if you, were, uh, if you had any kind of protein powder or anything like that, you could add that into here now as well and give it an extra boost of energy. Like you said, fighting orcs takes a lot of energy, hiking trails and trying to find the right things. So there we go. But yeah, it's really important to just kind of, and use a, uh, a non-stick heat resistant spatula when you're doing it. And again, keep on moving it because it does get fairly sticky and you just kind of want to make sure that cleanup is just as easy. Right, this is the point where I would not take your advice, walk away and then come back and this would all be like burnt to. Burnt to the uh, thing, yeah. well exactly, yeah. And then trick two is right now it's hot enough so I'm just going to shut the heat off and then that way you don't forget to turn off the stove, right? And smart. it won't overheat. So we're going to combine these two uh, pots together to make some uh, elven ration cakes right after these messages. Welcome back to Easy Eats. Again, we're in the Greener Villages Learning Kitchen with Travis Grant, owner of Unplugged, a game boards cafe, and we're making uh, Elven energy bars for those long D and D sessions that you guys have down at the uh, at the shop. Yeah. So we've got everything nice and melted right here. So this will go into the dry ingredients, and once I've got that in there, Travis, I'm going to get you to mix that all up, and uh, all we're going to get is a sticky, gooey ball that we're going to press out onto that sheet pan right there. 
So while you're mixing all that together, uh, what are, the, uh, what are the challenges of opening a small business? One of the first challenges I had opening the business was I knew that I wanted um, teenagers to go in there, but I also needed to have a liquor license to get you know the 20-something university students in there. And so that was a really big fight um, to be able to kind of make that happen. That was about a year-long process almost to get that happen because we did open up first without a liquor license. And trust me, there's a big difference between having one and not having one. At I the, can the imagine, cafe. yes. Uh, the other thing was educating the public. So when you talk about board games, uh, most people uh, think Monopoly, Battleship, stuff like that. And so when you tell people, hey, there's a cover charge to come in, everyone's like, why would I pay $6 to come to your cafe and play Monopoly? I've got that at home. So I had to educate people on like, no, no, there are thousands and thousands of games that are well beyond Monopoly that are really fun to play. So educating people on that, um, opening up the escape rooms, you know, we had to figure out, we designed all of our rooms, all of the puzzles, so we had to figure out, you know, puzzle theory, all of that stuff that, that you don't think about, um, and educating people on that. So there's, there's just a million things that you don't think about that just come around and that you just have to deal with. What are some of the most popular games that you see being played? One of the more popular games that gets played at the cafe is Cards Against Humanity. So that just, uh, it's a game about horrible things uh, said by horrible people. And that's the joke. And uh, you know, a, a lot of university students love to grab that on the weekend just to relax. A game that I push on people a lot is a game called Survive Escape from Atlantis. It's a really fun game where you're on this island that's sinking and the whole point is you're trying to get your little guys off the island onto the mainland while everyone else is trying to make sure that that doesn't happen by eating you with sharks, whales, uh, sea monsters. It's a really fun game and I've yet to teach it to someone who hasn't liked it. Okay, cool. Perfectly. So those you're pretty much all mixed in there. Beautiful. Which looks great. Let me just kind of take a peek, make sure that everything is all rolled in well. And then we're just going to grab the uh, parchment paper <laughs> right there. Yep. And we're just going to pop that right down on that right like this. And then I'm just going to get you to put on a pair of gloves or pass me a pair of gloves. And uh, all we're going to do now is we're just going to press that into a bar. Ah. And it's as simple as that. Perfect. And then when you're pressing that into a bar, we're just going to slide it into an oven at about 325 degrees. And we're going to let it bake for about 10 minutes or so, yep. just so everything comes together. How thick should this be? Like, am I making this thin? It, well, it depends on you, really. Um, you want it to be about a half inch thick okay. in, into squares, but uh, again, it's completely up to you. Uh, you can turn them into logs or into energy balls. Okay. Uh, you can turn them into like little pucks. Completely up to you, just like that. No, that's perfect. Um, now tell me a little bit more about your escape rooms. Like, I mean, you said you got five of them. Like, you've got a smaller space there. How do you fit them all in? So it's all about using your imagination to get everything to work. And that, uh, to me, those types of challenges are what uh, make our rooms exceptional. So uh, myself and Sean, my manager, we're the two who kind of come up with the ideas. We build the puzzles. We um, design the rooms, all of that stuff. And, um, and so basically what we've done is uh, trial and error. So it, the escape rooms themselves have been open for about seven years. We opened those up a year after the uh, board game cafe. And through trial and error and different rooms, we've learned what works and what doesn't work. We, our, our bomb room, for example, is in this really, really tiny <laughs> room. It's kind of claustrophobic, but that's the point. You're trying to disarm this massive bomb that's in this little tiny area. It's poorly lit. We've got the lights going off and flashing, like uh, simulating like thunder and lightning. Um, and, and people just love it. They love going in there. At, at first, they're a little like, well, I don't understand what's going on. But give them five, ten minutes, and, you know, the, the person who is the most upset about coming to the place is the person who's had the most fun when they've come out. Well, that's fantastic. Now, you're a cafe that people come to. Let's talk about this pandemic. You opened it up, you were starting to get a little traction, and then all of a sudden, like everyone else, your feet were cleared out from under you. How did you survive? So during the pandemic, unfortunately, I had to let go pretty much all of my staff. I kept on my manager because he's been with me since day one. Uh, and so, uh, you know, there's, there's two ways to look at the pandemic. You can look at it as something that's a setback and just kind of took the wind underneath us, out of our sails. 
or you can look at that as an opportunity. And that's kind of what we did. So during the pandemic, there obviously there wasn't people coming into our shop. So what Sean and I did is we sat down and we mapped out a bunch of escape rooms and we spent the year designing and building different props and ideas and things like that. We still had our food available for Skip the Dishes. We still had games open for pickup, curbside, curbside pickup. I was also delivering them. Uh, so there were ways, if, if you were clever enough, um, there were ways to still be in the game during the pandemic. Right on. Did you guys offer any kind of virtual kind of gaming and, or things like that? So we had thought about doing that and had tested it out and we just never really got there and we felt our time was better spent on doing stuff that would help us once we reopened. Um, but we did do some takeout specials. Um, one of my favorite takeout specials was the escape room takeout special. So basically you could get some food from us and you could also pick a take home escape room. So there are companies that have like pre-made escape room in the boxes that we sell. And we just made that a, like a special so you could eat some good food and play a game at home and simulate what would happen if you came to the cafe. Perfect. Speaking on those escape rooms, how long do they run? Like you said, you have one that's uh, defusing a bomb. Like how, if you really liked it, or if you weren't successful the first time and you want to try it again, how long do you have to kind of try that? Sure. The, the rooms themselves are about an hour long. Uh, so by the time, the whole experience I would say is about an hour, 15 minutes. By the time we go through the rules and talk about the locks and answer any questions you may have, you go in, you play, and then you come out. And then this is where you get to decide if you want to go downstairs and play games or not. And if you go downstairs, then that you know becomes, instead of an hour experience, that now becomes however long you want it to be. Do you change up your escape rooms or are they pretty much set? So uh, the nice thing about Fredericton is we live in a university town. So uh, you know every year it's new mm -hmm. university students. So I thought I would have to change them roughly every year. And that's a big investment, not in just time and money, but in brain power. Because you got to think up new puzzles. you got to keep it fresh. And thankfully, with the turnover of university students, I really don't have to change them over every year. In fact, I could probably not change them over ever, but that's not fun. So we do it about every two years. Are you the ones designing those virtual games? Our virtual games we license out from a company in Alberta and uh, they're great partners to have. Um, and they pump out a game roughly every year. And uh, they take uh, our, my suggestions under advisement as well. And, uh, but on top of that, I've been working on uh, with, with the gentleman here in town in designing our own virtual reality games as well because uh, I really like being in the nitty gritty of designing the game from start to finish. And in that way, if someone has an issue with it, they have an issue more with my design as opposed to someone else's design that I can't talk about or defend or whatever. We're going to throw these uh, energy bars into the oven for about 10-15 minutes and we'll be back right after this short break. <music> Welcome back to Easy Eats again. We're in the learning kitchen with uh, Travis Grant. Uh, Travis, we're done. These have cooled off a little bit, and these are the uh, the Elven energy bars. Again, we're kind of playing with that whole Dungeons and Dragons theme, seeing that you guys you own a game board cafe. So we're just going to cut these into bar shapes or into squares, however, and then you just wrap them individually, and then off you go. You pop them in on your next adventure, your next hike. So. Um, what background do you have, or did you need a background, I guess, to open up a cafe? So I have a couple of different backgrounds. Um, so one, I've been in the hospitality business for quite a while, uh, working at different restaurants as a server. I've worked in the dish pit. I've basically worked everywhere yeah. there. Um, but my, my passion is filmmaking, and I've gone, I went to film school in Vancouver, and uh, I've, I've filmed all over the world. I've made short films. I'm currently uh, in the process of making a fairly high-budget movie. And uh, this all ties actually back into why I opened up Unplugged. I wanted to be my own boss and I wanted to be able to just kind of like go do my own thing when I needed to, which is what Unplugged afforded me to, afforded me to do. But uh, the one thing that I do that I don't think other people do um, for our escape rooms is I take my film knowledge and I apply that to designing our escape rooms. So the way I look at it is I think an escape room as a scene uh, of, in a movie that you are acting out 
And so I write a script out that no one will ever see. And that's how it informs our puzzles, how the room's going to look, all of that stuff, even our intro videos that you watch beforehand, because there's uh, a cool intro video that sets up like the story of the room that you're about to do. So that all ties back into my, my uh, film background. So we're making Elven bars today, but you don't have to bring your Elven bars into the cafe, do you? You've got food on premises, do you? Yeah, and that's something that we still get uh, asked about is do you guys sell food and yes we do we we are very much uh, I, I would say our menu is very much like pub style we have a lot of fun appetizers we've got nachos poutines uh, we have delicious sandwiches made with just fat thick focaccia bread super delicious um, tons of desserts uh, basically there's something for everyone there uh, I would say our biggest seller is well, it's a candy bowl. <laughs> it's a bowl full of candy and some chocolate, and you know, just like uh, going on an adventure and D and D with these bars, playing a board game and little snacks go hand in hand. Well, I was going to say it's kind of hard to kind of play a board game and and bite into your club sandwich. So uh, <laughs> I would say that these kind of treats and side appetizers would be uh, w would be your your mainstay. One hundred percent. Yeah. Well, right on. You mentioned that you're you're producing and uh, working on a film. Can yeah. we know a little bit more about that? Sure, yeah. About uh, uh, just before Christmas, I did a big Kickstarter campaign with a fairly large YouTuber. And uh, we were looking for about $30,000 to do like this tiny short film. And uh, we ended up raising about a half a million dollars. Oh, fantastic, that's great. <laughs> yeah. So um, we're, we're past the Kickstarter phase and we've just finished up writing it. It's about, the script currently is at about an hour. So it, we're kind of looking at it as almost like a pilot to a series. Okay. Uh, and we plan on filming it in Ontario. It's, it's, a, it's an action film, so we need to be in a spot where, I would love to film it here, but we, we need to be in a spot where, you know, all the stunt guys are, where, where all the equipment is, and, and that's, that's in the Toronto area. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's fantastic. Um, can you tell us a little bit more? It's about this uh, series of novels called the Ryan Drake series. And I um, think it uh, a mix of like Mission Impossible and like a Tom Clancy type novel. Okay. So it's all about a CIA operative named Ryan Drake who gets into all these different adventures. And, um, and in this particular script that we've written, We've condensed this adventure down into a smaller one that's not as globetrotting because we don't have the money for a globetrotting adventure. Um, and it's, it's all about this guy who has uh, information that might, you know, save the world. And Ryan Drake has to go in there and get save the guy and, uh, and escape from this base. And of course, as things do in movies, things go wrong and they have to fight their way out. So. That sounds fantastic. I, I can't wait to see it. Um, Will we be seeing an adventure room based on the uh, <laughs> on, on the series? You know, I hadn't thought about it until you just mentioned it, so maybe. When's this production going to, to start, have, or have you already started? I think we were hoping to shoot in the summertime. I've asked for about three weeks of shooting. Uh, no guarantee that that's what's going to happen. That's what I've asked for and what I'm crossing my fingers for. Uh, so it's a little too early to tell when exactly we're shooting. Um, but I can say that we're probably going to be shooting digitally. Uh, just be, I would love to shoot film, but again, it's just a very expensive thing, and digital cameras have come so far that you know, the layman would never know the difference between okay. a digital uh, shot and a film shot. Um, and so right now, we're just in the process of crewing up, getting our cast members locked down, and uh, you know, as soon as we have that information, then yeah, I'll be I'll be making posts about that and talking about it. When's your next D and D adventure? So we've got one coming up this month, and one of my guys, Bobby, he is uh, the genius in charge of all of that stuff. But if you want to go to our Facebook page, um, that's where we announce our D and D stuff and anything basically that um, might be of interest to people for for, for events. Well, fantastic. Um, I know that my my sons love. D and D, and they've got their own campaign going. But like you said, this is a great way to meet new people and to create new friendships and get out of that kind of stale rut with the same group of guys. Yeah, right on. <laughs> well, to the next adventure, sir. Cheers. Thank you. Oh yeah. There you go. Mm -hmm.